Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and looks like it's that time of the year again. The time for different space agencies to launch a mission to Mars. So there are actually three really interesting missions coming up this year, and in the next few weeks, the mission from NASA, the mission from the Chinese agency, and also the mission from the United Arab Emirates will be launching to Mars. Let's talk about this, and welcome to What The Math. So every 26 months, Mars comes into just the right position for us to launch a mission there. And the reason why it happens every 26 months is basically related to orbits. Here you can see that Martian orbit takes longer than the orbit of Earth, so they only align with one another every 26 months. One year on Mars is about 1.9 years, so here, just over every two years, the planets align with one another where a very energy efficient orbital maneuver can be launched from Earth and essentially in roughly around 6 months, whatever we launch from Earth will reach Mars. This is usually referred to as the Hawkman's Orbital Maneuver, and there are actually a few very old videos on the channel that explain how this works in detail. But the idea here is that currently this is our best bet at getting to Mars, and it just so happens that it basically occurs every 26 months. So this year there are three missions aligned, although originally there were four, but the fourth one, known as ExoMars, planned by the Russian and the European space agencies, has actually been postponed until the next window in 2022. So we do have only three missions launching, but even these three are pretty exciting. The first mission I wanted to talk about, and the first one launching, is going to be this one right here. This is known as the Emirates Mars mission, also known as the Hope Mars mission, that is being launched by the space agency of United Arab Emirates in collaboration with several US universities. The point of the mission is scientific, but the major point here is that this is basically the first space mission, first major space mission, by an Arab nation. And the reason they call it HOPE is because they really hope that this will encourage future generations of various Arab students to try to pursue different sciences and also space sciences. But this is not a purely symbolic mission. It does have several scientific experiments to conduct, and it's trying to become the first ever true weather satellite for Mars with the main purpose here being studying the weather and climatic changes on Mars for just over two years. This probe is going to assume um, a typical Martian orbit, and within approximately two years it's going to study different weather and climatic cycles, including of course dust storms and a lot of other potentially undiscovered phenomena. And the main scientific goal for this mission is to study why is it that Mars is losing so much hydrogen and oxygen from its atmosphere, and most importantly, what exactly happened to Mars to undergo such a dramatic climate change. In other words, we're trying to study the most extreme version of what could happen to planet Earth, and by studying this on Mars, we're essentially trying to prevent this from happening here on Earth. And one of the main reasons this mission is actually kind of interesting is because their goal is to create a kind of a database that is going to be easily accessible and shareable with many different institutions around the world. In other words, they're trying to create a kind of a knowledge-based economy that's going to play a big role in the future of scientific exploration and, of course, scientific discoveries. So in other words, they're not trying to just do it themselves and keep the data all for themselves just so they can publish papers and become the first to discover something. They're really trying to create this very international and sort of collaborative environment, which actually sounds really, really cool. So it's a pretty interesting mission, but in terms of the actual instruments and in terms of the actual devices used to study Mars, for the most part it's going to use three types of cameras, infrared, ultraviolet and visual light, in order to try to collect as much data from the surface as possible. But chances are that by the time you're watching this, this mission has already been launched, and it's actually been launched from Japan. The uh, space agency in Japan decided to collaborate with the Arab Space Agency to try to launch this mission. So that's number one. Number two mission is, well, actually almost completely the opposite, because we know almost nothing about it. We've only actually gotten the name for this mission only about five to six weeks ago, and this is of course the mission from China. So this is also a very ambitious mission, because this mission, currently known as Tianwen-1, is not only going to have an actual orbiter, but also a tiny rover that is going to try to land on the Martian surface. Now, it's an extremely ambitious mission. This is the first such mission for the Chinese space agency, and so the chances for failure here are extremely high. And the thing is, 
For China, at least, this is a really dangerous maneuver because if this mission fails, this is going to look horrible for their, well, their communist government. The entire uh, premise here is that they're trying to prove to the world that they've become the new superpower. And a failure here is going to look really bad for them. So trying to prove to the world that they can do it by choosing this particular mission might have been actually overstretching it. And the reason I'm saying this is because of the historical number of failures when it comes to landing on Mars. Since October of 1960, many different missions have been attempted by the United States and the Soviet Union and many, as you can see, have failed completely. As a matter of fact, there were many, many different attempts to land on Mars by the Soviet Union and their only successful attempt and actually the first lander ever to land on Mars was this right here. Mars 3 lander did land on Mars, but only lasted for a few seconds and completely failed afterwards. Since then, only the United States was able to launch and successfully land on Mars, and the experience here played a big role because even the US experienced a lot of failures in the beginning. The most recent such failure was Phobos Grant launched in 2011, which actually did have a Chinese satellite inside of its orbiter as well. And so it's almost like a curse that Russia has that's never been able to land on Mars. And it's not just Russia, European Space Agency has failed as well. Which hopefully makes you realize that landing on Mars is an extremely difficult task. It requires a lot of attempts, it requires a lot of different um, trials, and most importantly, it's one of those things that you kind of have to be ready to fail at. A successful mission here is extremely difficult. If Tianwen-1 succeeds here, it is going to be a huge achievement for China. But the success chance right now is extremely low, which is why I personally think it was probably a bad idea to do it that way. Mostly because right now China really doesn't need any more bad publicity. But it looks like they are going to be launching it in the next few weeks, so I guess we'll see how it goes when it actually arrives to Mars sometime early next year. Now the main objective for this mission is to try to search for evidence of both current and also past life by essentially using various scanners to try to scan the rocks and to try to discover what the Martian surface is hiding. From what we know so far, and it's actually not a lot, there seem to be a few rudimentary mineral scanners um, in the Tianwen-1 rover, but we don't really know much about it, and it does seem to be somewhat similar to their lunar rover that's currently exploring the uh, far side of the moon. But once again, we don't really know the details about the mission because they don't really like to share a lot of stuff uh, ahead of the missions. Also, unlike the lunar landing that was conducted a few years ago, this landing here is going to be a lot more difficult, mostly because there are several technologies at play here that China has never tested. One of them being so-called heat shields that China has never tested outside of uh, laboratory conditions. The other one being the parachute technology that China has also never really tested in these thin air conditions. And it seems that they also are trying to use some sort of a airbag technology as well to try to land the rover, which once again gives yet another little chance for this mission to fail, because this is a pretty difficult maneuver to accomplish. So even though statistically their chances to succeed in this mission are currently kind of low, if they do manage to pull it off, it is definitely going to be a very exciting mission not only for China but for the rest of the world as well, because well, technically, they'll break the curse of communist countries. They'll be the first communist country to land on the Red Planet. And the last, but definitely not least of the three missions, is the NASA's Perseverance rover. And this has to be the most ambitious mission ever attempted on Mars. Just like its sibling from back in 2012, the Curiosity rover, the new Perseverance rover is going to not have any solar panels. It's actually going to be operating using a nuclear reactor, so-called RTG. Its RTG is going to allow it to survive for at least 14 years and possibly even longer. And the current mission profile is, well, it's for two years, but it's probably going to be extended as the time goes by. But unlike the previous rovers, it also has a tiny, tiny attachment that's super exciting. It's going to have a helicopter inside, and this helicopter is going to be testing different theories and different ideas about potential flight on the Martian surface and in Martian atmosphere. And though idea of a helicopter on Mars does sound kind of crazy, the theory and science behind it is actually totally sound. This mission has already been tested and retested many different times here on the planet, and we know that it should technically work. 
I believe Veritasium actually made a video about this mission and goes through the details of what exactly happens here and how all of this works. The name for the helicopter is Ingenuity and its main purpose is to try to scan and also scout out the areas around the probe, around the Perseverance rover to try to collect um, different samples for study. The plan is also to actually collect enough samples that can then later be retrieved with some of the future missions. In other words, this is almost like a part one mission to try to collect samples that can then be retrieved by another mission in probably a few years. But the rover itself is also very exciting and has a lot of different devices and instruments in it. There are at least 23 different cameras, for example. There are two different microphones. There is a very exciting experiment known as MOXIE or Mars Oxygen ISRU experiment whose main purpose is to try to produce oxygen from the materials available on Mars. For this particular experiment, they're going to be using Martian carbon dioxide and are then going to try to convert it to oxygen. And if this experiment works, it means that we can actually scale it up for future missions to Mars where humans can start using Martian atmosphere to produce necessary oxygen for us. It also has a very powerful ground penetrating radar that's going to try to search for underground water deposits and also various salty brines that can be used for, well, water, because we also need that when we go to Mars. And lots and lots more different instruments to try to measure minerals and materials around the Martian surface. The purpose of this mission is to serve as a kind of a scout and exploratory vehicle for future human missions to Mars. So it's not really searching for life here, it's also not really trying to determine any kind of theoretical value, it's truly trying to determine if Mars can serve as a potential um, platform for human life to survive. It's going to be conducting all sorts of experiments and searches to try to determine if humans can survive on Mars and if a future manned mission to Mars is going to be successful or if we need to kind of cancel everything. And so honestly, of the triple mission that's planned to Mars, this has to be the most exciting one and if this one succeeds, everyone is going to be super, super psyched to talk about it for years to come. All of the discoveries from this particular mission are going to definitely serve the scientific community in the future and will help us understand if humans one day can actually become an extraterrestrial species as well and if we can actually settle other colonies somewhere out there. If this mission fails, well, I guess we're gonna have to try again. But all in all, I guess July and August of 2020 is kind of exciting for the Martian missions. Might not be as exciting for other reasons, but this is something to look forward to. By February and March of 2020, all of the missions will have arrived to Mars and will definitely begin their operation, so I'm definitely coming back and talking about the successes and possible failures of these three missions. Hopefully they all succeed and we will learn something about Mars, but if they all fail, well, I guess there's next time. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon. And also maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.